Men call him Dr. Strange and speak his name in whispers. Somewhere in the city, between darkness and dawn, a tortured man tosses fitfully in his bed, vainly seeking peace that will not come. No, no, go away! Please go away! It's no use. I can't sleep. I dare not sleep. It's that same dream. Every night, the same. But why? What can it mean? I... I can't fight it alone. I need help. I've heard a name. Somewhere in Greenwich Village. Doctor Strange. He's a witch doctor or something. Maybe he can help me. The next morning on a quiet side street in New York's colorful Greenwich Village, I'm, I'm, I'm here to see Dr. Strange. He doesn't know me, but, but I need help. Well, Dr. Strange knows all. Enter. Suddenly, a tall, brooding figure appears, wearing a striking amulet at his throat. The cold gray eyes of Dr. Strange pierce the mist of the room like a knife. I'm in trouble. I had to come. I'm desperate. All men who come to me are. Speak. It's my dreams. Every night I have the same dreams. Over and over. It's terrible. I can't stand it. Continue. I, it, it's always the same. A hooded figure. In chains. It stares at me. It never stops. It stares and stares enough, at me. Enough. Enough. Tonight I shall visit you. I shall find the answer to your dream. Now go. But how? How are you going to do it? By entering your dream. Later in the quiet of his study, Dr. Strange sits silently in front of an ancient incense burner, his physical body in an eerie trance. It is time for me to meet the master from whom all my powers flow. Like a fleeting ghost, his astral form leaves his mortal body and drifts away. Being without form or substance, nothing can impede its flight. It drifts effortlessly through the building wall, high into the sky, across the vast ocean, the continents, conquering all of space and time in its silent flight. Until finally, in the remote vastness of Asia... It is a good thing that you have come, my son. I sense danger surrounding you. You must be very cautious, for my days are numbered. And it is you who will someday take my place in the battle against the forces of darkness and evil. I shall heed your words, respected master. I shall try to prove myself worthy of your trust in me. So be it. Now go, for I sense you are needed elsewhere. But mark you well, should danger threaten, depend upon the ambulant which I have given you. That night, thousands of miles to the west, Dr. Strange, in his mortal form again, visits the man who has sought his help. You must sleep now, and have no fear. I shall be nearby. I don't know what it is about you, but there is something in you which gives me confidence. His sleep has overcome him. He begins to dream. It is time for my astral no. form to cross the dimensions. And as his body goes motionless and cold, the astral body of Doctor Strange drifts upward into the very dream itself. Oh, it's desolate here. Lonely and foreboding. But wait. Something no. begins to appear. No! No! Stay away! Please stay away! You! Whoever you are, why do you torment him so? He knows well the reason why I am the symbol of evil, evil that he has done. That is why I am chained so. If you do not believe, 
<laughs> Ask Mr. Wilson! Suddenly another form appears, far more menacing than the first. So, it is Dr. Strange. You have entered the dimension of dreams for the last time. Never again shall you thwart me. Nightmare, my ancient foe. You know well the rules of sorcery, Strange. Those that enter a hostile dimension must pay for it with their lives. You will serve me even as does the fool you vainly seek to help. My spells will entrap you! <laughs> Your power is an illusion, Nightmare. You'll not defeat me with spells such as these. Even the simplest mudras will protect me. Meanwhile, in the semi-dark bedroom, the sleeper awakes. <gasps> he... he mentioned Mr. Wilson. So that's what it's all about. There's Dr. Strange. He must have heard it all. He's in a trance, helpless. It's just as well. He mustn't be allowed to live with what he's learned. As the man reaches for a weapon with which to carry out his plans, the battle continues in the dream dimension. Behold, Dr. Strange. You may witness your own destruction. Your mortal body is unprotected. Its life is about to be snuffed out. You are overconfident, Nightmare. You cannot make me falter thus. I may not be able to protect my body as well, but there is yet one who can. Guruji, hear me. I need your help. And across the limitless void of time and space, the venerable master hears the desperate appeals of Doctor Strange. He calls. There is only one way to help him, through the enchanted amulet. I must project my command to it. And halfway across the world, the mysterious amulet on Doctor Strange's motionless chest begins to glow, brighter, ever brighter, until it slowly opens, revealing a fantastic eye within, an eye such as no mortal man has ever beheld, such as no mortal man would ever want to behold. Suddenly from that blinding orb, a hypnotic ray shoots out, freezing his would-be attacker to the spot. And in that split second, taking advantage of Nightmare's own attempt to distract him, Doctor Strange darts past his enemy in the dream dimension. And as the awesome amulet loses its blinding radiance, the astral form of Doctor Strange re-enters his mortal body. I made it. I'm safe again, and none too soon. The strain upon the Ancient One has been great. You've eluded me this time, but I'll get you yet. I was a fool to trust this man, so one should never blindly equate the oppressed with the innocent. I shall relieve you of your weapon and your hypnotic spell. <laughs> now speak, and speak only the truth. I command you. It's over. You're still alive. That means I've lost. I was a fool to come to you. I didn't suspect that my dreams were caused by the many men I've hooked on junk. Wilson was the last of them. I burned him, but he couldn't do anything about it. Now, now I'll confess. That will be the only way you'll ever sleep again. Be with us again next time for more of the occult adventures of Doctor Strange, master of the mystic arts.